What is an EMP? I'm going to talk about something many think will shut down all electronic devices. It's called an electromagnetic pulse or EMP. We'll find out what this is and what devices are susceptible and if this is fact, fiction, or just a conspiracy theory. Up next. An EMP can come from a nuclear explosion, yes. In fact, that's mostly what we think about. However, the sun can cause EMP-like effects from something called a coronal mass ejection, or CME. The first one we experienced was in 1859 during the time of the telegraph. Telegraph wires went down back then. It all sparked up and, and no one knew why. There have been smaller events even in the 80s. The most recent sunspot cost event was in 2012. But fortunately, the Earth was not in a position that could be affected. And this was just by chance. We could have been affected. The main fear comes from a HEMP or high altitude EMP from a nuclear device. A nuclear explosion at ground level won't have much EMP effects. This is why early bomb testing didn't really focus on these effects. But later on, high altitude devices were tested in the USA and in the USSR and a mass effect on electrical devices were seen. For an HEMP to affect a large area such as the entire US, the device would have to explode 200 to 300 miles up in the atmosphere. I will explain how an HEMP works. Nuclear explosions actually cause three distinct effects and each has its own wave behavior. The main explosion, which is called E1, is very brief and it's characterized by a heavy release of gamma rays. This explosive effect is only milliseconds long. It has a broadband effect, meaning it releases large amounts of electromagnetic interference in many, many frequencies, both high and low. That brief release of electromagnetic radiation has no effect on humans. The upper atmosphere is inundated by gamma rays from the sun every day, so that will not reach us. But the intensity of the gamma rays in a small area will cause electrons to be separated from the atmospheric atoms nearby. This is the same kind of thing that happens every day with the sun and it's called ionization. But in this case, the effect is local and a huge electrical charge is created because of all the free electrons in this one little space. There's an E2 phase of the explosion, which is more like a lightning strike. And this has the effect of strong, like strong static electricity. It's not going to have much impact on our devices. The most serious effects come in the third phase called E3. This stage can last for 30 seconds or more. Now what makes E3 particularly dangerous for electronics is that the huge electrical charge in the sky shoves the magnetic forces of the Earth aside. Then the magnetic forces of the Earth will return again. This is like a big magnet that repels another magnet. We get movement in magnetic forces on Earth all the time in small amounts. This comes from charged particles coming into our atmosphere from the sun. So this is a known thing. This is known to interrupt our radio communications. This is something we know about. Let me demonstrate simply what happens when magnetic forces move. This is like a little science experiment. Here I have a coil of wire and I've connected it to a voltage meter so you can see what happens to it. There's a magnet next to it. Notice that when the magnet is not moving, there is no effect. There's no current showing on the voltmeter. Think of that as the power lines from the utility on a normal day. Now, let's move the magnet around the wires. Similar to the effect of the Earth's magnetism being moved around in the E3 phase. 
The effect of magnetism on us will be in the form of electromagnetic waves. This is a cyclical force going up and down. So I will emulate this by moving the magnet back and forth. Your wall AC outlet does the same thing in 60 cycles per second. I'm doing it in slow motion here. If you look at the voltmeter, you will see that not only is it generating electricity, but you can see that the polarity is changing from positive to negative. This is why it's called an alternating current or AC. Now AC is unique compared to the DC power in your batteries. Alternating current creates something called inductance. As you can see here, simply moving a magnet over the wires creates electricity. But passing AC current over one wire will cause inductance in other wires nearby as long as the electricity is pulsing or moving in a wave. This is how your electricity is delivered. In order to make the wires be delivered to your house, the electric utility puts out a stronger voltage on the wires and then when it's near your house, the voltage is lowered with a step-down transformer. A transformer is a form of inductor, just like I was saying about the coils. A step-down transformer lowers the voltage to 110 volts by making the turns of wire less on one side of the circuit. So our entire grid is made up of thousands of miles of wires and step-down transformers. When an EMP3 hits these wires, a long range and extremely strong low frequency electromagnetic wave hits all of our wires. On utility poles, in inside wiring, in extension cords, in antennas, it's projected that the wavelength will be under 10 hertz. This generates a lot of current because there are a lot of wires, thousands and thousands of miles of wires. The current in these wires hit the step down transformers but since the current is flowing in reverse from the wires back to the utility company, the step-down transformers become step-up transformers all the way back to the utility. This will deliver hundreds of thousands of volts and amps to all the transformers in the grid. So we're actually increasing the power when it goes backward on the transformers. When this electric spike of hundreds of kilovolts hits your devices, it will cause a spark in any conductor that is within a short distance. This is why electronic circuits fail. Electronic circuits are made up of transistors and IC chips where hundreds of transistors are put into smaller and smaller spaces. Thus, a high voltage would cause a spark and basically short out these transistors. This did not exist in 1859. Will all electronics fail? Not necessarily. If they're not plugged in, if there's a surge protector, a heavy duty one, and if there are no long wires to build up the inductance, then they will likely not spark. The current thinking is that cell phones, small electronics running on batteries will not likely break unless they're within range of the E1 pulse. That's the one that has low and high frequencies. Most of our electronics will fail from the movement of magnetic forces on Earth and the effect coming from our electric grid. Experts think that the strong frequencies will be in the low HF and the very low HF frequencies, and there will be little effect in the gigahertz range. So your 5G phone will likely make it, but the cell tower won't. Will Faraday bags work? The most common prepper recommendation is to store some devices like radios in a metal garbage can with a cover. Then you put your gear and plastic bags inside it. This is a sensible version of a Faraday bag. Probably any metal enclosure will work as well, like a gun safe. Put some radios inside a metal safe. Just lay the electronics on some insulating material. But the problem with thinking of a Faraday container is that it means you can't use the devices. You're supposed to learn how to use radios and things from practice and not learn it when there's no one to talk to. 
So here are some tips from experts. Surge protectors will work according to them. Putting a surge protector at the utility box may not work because there's still house wiring that can get inductance. So think about all the long wires around you and think of what could spark. Antennas should be disconnected when not in use. Cars, by the way, are enclosed in metal and they don't necessarily have long wires. So it's not clear if cars will be affected by an EMP E3 pulse. The metal of a car would create inductance, but maybe not resonant with a low frequency wave. How solar panels will likely fail, by the way. The microchips in the controller parts would be vulnerable. One thing is clear. Whether from a man-made EMP or a sun-induced EMP-like event, our grid and our reliance on electronics in this modern age is at risk. We have to be prepared for a potential shutdown of communications, of a time when there could be no internet and no phones. Think of what would be left working. Ham radio would still work. Remember that our dependence on a singular method of communication, the internet, hasn't existed for very long, only since the 1990s. So we haven't considered all the dangers. Maybe in the future, all of our communications will be in fiber optic lines and that would not be susceptible to an EMP. If you like my content, guys, please subscribe to my channel and slam on that notification bell. Thank you.